Unlock your potential with a comprehensive suite of investing tools and expert education with Gamma Edge. Start your free 14-day trial today. Let, let's go back to what I call first principles, okay? And there's some, you know, whether it's Gamma, whether it's Charm, whether it's Vanna, Voma, you know, whatever. There, there's lots of Greeks out there, and I, I get understanding how they interact with things is is really challenging. I get it. Um, the 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 first thing to think about, is, and let's just make sure everyone's kind of on the same page here. Um, Delta is the king, and what happens to Delta really will swamp the boat with respect to any of the second order Greeks of which Charm, Vanna, Gamma, Blonde. Now, so, so the first thing that I want everyone to take away in their heads is that if I open or close a contract, I move Delta, if it's, you know, like at the money, I move Delta from 50 to zero or zero to 50. Um, plus or minus, whether it's a call or a put, and whether you're long or short, doesn't matter. The point is, I open or close a contract. I don't care what gamma and delta and all those second order things are, or not delta, gamma, uh, charm, and vanna is, I, I care what delta is. So that's the first kind of order of business, and that's just make sure we're all on the same page. Um, there's three predominant although the you know the equations are complex and you know they'll make your eyes roll back in your head and you don't need to understand the math what you do need to to put into three separate buckets are what do those second order greeks really represent and i'm going to go through the three right now and this is the, the other thing that you need just to memorize you know put it as a post-it note on your wall or whatever the case may be Gamma is the influence on delta as spot price changes. So basically it's a second order Greek and it says how much does delta change if I change the underlying stock. So we have this chain of spot price to delta to gamma. And gamma is related purely to that change in spot price. Charm by a different token charm is when spot price isn't changing right charm is due to time and it literally is time decay and it's it's the change in delta due to time so we have literally charm is always present always always present now it's going to be amplified or not by the OI surface, but it is always there. So um, it may be swamped by other effects, and we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second, but gamma is spot price moving, charm is time moving, and you can imagine the two probably do interplay with each other. And then the third one, Vanna. Vanna is change in implied volatility and what its impact on delta is. So inputs to all of those certainly are spot price, implied volatility, time to expiry. So they all have a role, right? And, and, and so I'm, I'm oversimplifying. But I want you to internalize that if we have horizontal pricing on the time graph, right? So your, your time is on the x-axis, we're, we're in the middle of the day, I know you trade the queues, and the queues are going sideways. That's not a lot of spot change. So it, it, you know, it's dithering, it's moving up and down, but you know, let's say that it's not volatile, right? And it's just kind of coasting sideways. This is where charm now starts to rear its head because we're not seeing a lot of volatility, which is actually an adjustment 
of supply and demand that the market makers do to the IV strikes. We're not seeing a lot of gamma because we're going to be constrained between a couple strikes and maybe or maybe not those strikes are, are low on the, the, the uh, OI surface. And so what you have is you have the change in delta due to time. It's really that simple. Um, now, there are the, the curves, and that's kind of where things get a little more challenging. The curves are different between gamma, which, it, which peaks very, very close to being at the money. So think of a bell curve. And gamma is right at where the spot price, it, it's extremely close to the peak of that bell curve. So as spot price moves around, gamma moves around. Now, charm actually is, a, uh, you, you'll see in the money, this is where in the money and out of the money really start to matter. And, and it's also the same thing on Vanna that moneyness really starts to drive where the sensitivities are. And that's why we have charm strikes. And we don't talk about it a lot here, but you also have Vanna strikes. And just cutting to the chase of what you're trying to, to you know, get, get your head around, how do you use charm? Charm is that area where as I, as I go through that strike, I'm going to see a lot of sensitivity due to just time decay. And that's because of the OI surface. So if I have one contract across the entire OI surface, I don't have two open interest or three open interest, you know, per strike, per expiry. I've just got one contract. I got a flat open interest surface. It's gonna look, um, the the curve is it's not like the gamma curve the bell curve it actually um, will as as you've seen it'll have a negative going amount meaning we're changing delta one direction on on one side of spot price and we're accentuating delta uh, for spot price on on the other side and if that's not clear i can i can show you what it looks like just in a you know in a simulation but the takeaway from that is that now if i have oi across my surface which i do right we have these option contracts and they're not one i mean you may have 10,000 open interest on one strike et cetera, for the next expiry and all of a sudden you get a multiplying effect and so when we talk about charm strikes and you see the confluence of the OI surface, the open interest, overlaid with where spot price is, we get this accentuation of either a big spike where we're going to have a major change in delta in one direction or we're going to have a major change in delta in the other direction. And that's due to time if, if price moves. So the takeaway here is this. Watch delta first, and we do that with vol U and vol D. Next, if price settles down and becomes range bound within whatever your trading interval is, you can be assured that charm is present. How present it is will be completely dependent upon the OI surface and a few other things, you know, days to expiry and things like that, you know, or not just days, but minutes to expiry or hours to expiry, right? The, the closer we get to expiry, the more charm starts to, to rear its head. And then I would think about it as those areas of being where I have maximum change of delta due to time. If I'm in this horizontally, you know, kind of constrained area, the ranges we talk about, and ask yourself, what's the dealer got to do? If I go through that strike, what happens to the dealer's position? Are they having to buy? Are they having to sell? And once you have that concept in your head and that visualization in your head, you can anticipate what they have to do.